special thanks to uh, Jade Moff for gifting me this game. <laughs> uh, I asked everyone what they wanted me to play for Valentine's Day for the uh, month of February for you know Nerds New Sexy Entertainment, and I was I was told this game, and it's perfect date, perfect date. As you can guess, uh, it's all about kitty cats, which you know me, I can't stand cats. I'm not a cat person, I'm a dog person. This isn't going to be interesting. <coughs> Meow. Let's do it. Currently play, currently play through no game in progress. New game. <coughs> I wonder how long this game is. Basic bitch looking motherfucker. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Fun in the perfect day. Auto save. The game supports an auto save feature. I'm an angel, except I am the devil and reject. I am. Okay. Auto save works. I, I don't know. What the fuck? I'm not sure how long we've been sailing, but it feels like forever. I'm not feeling too well now, so it's a huge relief to hear the deck lad shout. Lad? Lands approach! Island approach! Make yourself ready! I'm finally here. When I applied last month, I was just another broke student living off of baked beans, and I didn't really think I had a chance of being accepted to be a part of any of the, uh, the prestigious Cat Island research team. Oh, God. I hate it already. Yet here it is. A little black dot in the distance, growing larger by the second, is the infamous Cat Island, the place I will call home for the next few months. My heart momentarily skips a beat. What if there's a mistake? What if they accepted someone else's application and accidentally sent the offer to me? rummage about in my bag until I find the papers. You gotta be sure, you know? DP Corporation. Dear Wild, we are pleased to be able to offer you the position of research assistant to Professor Poo pa Popper, Popper at our research facility on Cat Island. The position will be for an initial period of eight weeks. Your contact will be sent separately. Contract will be sent separately. We look forward to working with you. Uh, yours sincerely, Professor Popper, PhD, BSC, Hans, DPG. Not even an attempt to figure that out. No, no mistake. That's my name right there on the top left corner. Wow. And there's his name at the bottom. He is behind the whole operation. Professor Paul Purr, science genius, and my new boss. I look up from my papers to see dry land rapidly approaching before us. It seems to be surrounded by a huge barrier of impenetrable black rocks. As we get closer, we're not slowing down, and I begin to worry that we're going to crash into them. Then, at the very last moment, we take a sharp turn to the left, and suddenly we're sailing smoothly towards a jetty through an opening in the rocks. I blow out that I, <laughs> I blow out the breath that I've been holding and break into a smile. Yay! Nicely done, Skipper. The ferryman comes out, and behind the steering wheel, ignoring my attempts at camaraderie, and shouts rather. Briskly. Whatever that word is. Briskly? Take all your belongings. We won't be back for days, so don't leave nothing you'll need. Thank you. I smile, smile wearily at the ferryman and his son and pick up my bags. Ready to disembark, we glide seamlessly into the wooden jetty, and the sun leaps ashore to tie us off. He's greeted by a bulky man in a uniform, who I take to be a security officer of some kind. Joe. Sir. Caught you a mouse. 
Then he laughs loudly, as though he's said the funniest thing he's ever heard. It's very disconcerting. Discon what? Disconcerting? Disconcerting. And these using big words that my little brain can't handle. The security guard remains surely and turns his attention to me. Okay. Let's be having you then. He holds out a large his large hand, which I assume is an offer to help me off the boat. But as I reach out to take it, he snatches it away, throwing me off balance so that I almost fall off to the side. What a great start. ID card? Oh, I see. Of course. I reach into my back pocket and hand over the laminated card I was given on the mainland. <laughs> Cat Island Security. Wow. 117. What the fuck? Well, you know, up, whatever. Meow. Yeah. Cat dance. Oh my god, it's Egon Spangler! I've missed you so much, Harold Ramis! Um, he barely looks at it before striding off, grunting over his shoulder. This way. follow him down the dirt track path and get my first proper view of the island. It's beautiful, lush and green. I'm, ready, I'm already under the spell. After no more than a couple of minutes trekking, we're at a base camp which consists of an assortment of tents and huts. Among them are two more solid looking structures, one larger and one smaller. I presume these are the labs. The whole camp is, mod is modern. But functional. It reminds me of an empty. Ugh. It reminds me of an army outpost. I'm struck by the lack of people. In fact, there's no one around, apart from an older woman sitting outside, peeling a pile of potatoes. I smile and give her a little nod, but she just stares back at me. Miss Miracle. Try not to get paranoid. Wait, there's stats? Oh, I see. Okay. Here. He stopped at the largest of the tents, indicating that I should go inside. I feel rude just walking in, so I make my presence known first. Um, hello? but friendly voice calls out. Come. Walk in and there he is, hunched over some documents. The great Professor Palmer. Sir, it's an honor to meet you. Yes, yes. You must be wild. Come in, come on in, my dear. Glad to have you aboard. Good journey? Well, long. Yes, indeed. We're rather tucked away here. Now, let me offer you some refreshment. Water, coffee, something stronger perhaps, whiskey. Fine. Thank you. Just some water. A cup of tea. Yeah, it'd be rude if I let you drink whiskey on your own. It's like, yeah. Well, if you're having one, it would be rude to let you drink whiskey on your own. Jolly good. I can tell you and I are going to get along famously. Take a swig from the bottle and pass this to me. I try not to show my self-consciousness and syrup tip. There's, there's a word. The, the tit is in that word. <laughs> Surreptitiously or whatever, wipe the neck with my sleeve before taking a modest sip. It'll take you a while before you find your way around and how to discover how it all works. So, for today, I thought I would just get you kit it out, and maybe introduce you to some of the locals, the cats, that is. I believe you've already met most of the human locals. Oh, I've only met the ferryman and the security guard who brought me here. Yes, that's about it. And the lady outside? Ah, oh, Miss Marigold. Her and her husband are the caretaker. Wonderful couple, the Marigolds. 
You'll meet them before too long. We're a tidy little family here. Well, and I'm sure you'll I'm sure you'll fit in nicely. Thank you, sir. I hope so. Okay, so first things first. This is your basic kit. He begins to go through a pile of things in his desk, explaining each of them in turn. This is your backpack. You can put everything in it. We will be going on plenty of field trips, so it'll be very useful. As will your own water bottle. Some disinfectant hand spray. Ah, these are heavy duty reinforced gloves, which are essential when tagging cats in the wild. Yeah, you don't want to get scratched. Don't want, <laughs> don't want any scratches from felines. We don't know now, do we? I suppose not. I shove each of them into my new backpack as he gives them to me. Likewise, these goggles are to be bought. Oh, Likewise, these goggles are to be brought along on all field trips. Uh, this slot here. He indicates to a small pile of what looks like laundry. His basic uniform, lab coats, masks, stethoscope, etc. Finally, without a doubt, most importantly, this. He holds up something that looks a lot like a mobile phone, except it clearly isn't. This is your catalog. Catalog? Oh, fucking kill me. Catalog? Yes. The name comes from its earliest version. It was initially designed to record and store data on cats, scan them, and log their details. But as you see, we've come a long way since then. Now you can use it to communicate with the rest of our team. I've added everyone's contact details for you. Listen to music, take photos, there's even a pen that comes with it to insert microchips into the back of the cat's necks so that we can keep track of them. That sounds great. It's a very valuable piece of equipment, Wild, and I need you to protect it above all else. You understand? He is looking me directly in the eyes and clearly expects a response. Yes, sir. Of course, I will look after it. Good. You'll get to know all the functions as you go along. But for now, I suggest we take a stroll out and see what we can't find. See if we can't find a few friends to introduce you to, so that you can try it out. There you go. He hands me the gadget. I feel a bit nervous taking charge of it, but also really keen to have a go. Uh huh. Dancy kitty. Down at the beach, the professor explains things as we go. The mixture, the mixture of terrain on Cat Island is quite unique. Even in such a relatively small area, you'll find forests, mountains, jungle, beaches, woodland, all of these different geological and ecological zones in one place. It really is most remarkable. It certainly is. Even the lack of wildlife is, in itself, quite remarkable. What do you mean, Professor? Well, put simply, there is a type of force field that surrounds the island, disallowing anything to enter. You mean literally anything? Absolutely. No birds, fish, or creatures of any kind can penetrate it. Forgive my lack of intelligence on this subject, but uh, we're here. The professor lets out a disconcerting loud laugh. Ah, I see what you mean. Well, there is, of course, one small break in the invisible wall. That, and that is where we built the jetty. But let's not get too bogged down on this right now. What you need to know is that basically the island is shaped like a peanut. It is picked up a nearby stick and draws a simple map of the, in the sand. Look at that, it does look like a peanut. This, our end of the island, is very well known to us now. We've been researching here for many years. The other end is not so familiar to us. We have encountered difficulties that have hindered our progress in, in the region. Pokemon! Catamon! 
Gotta catch them all. Okay. Oh, what the fuck? What? What, did, what just happened? What? Just, no! It's not Doki Doki all over again, is it? Jade Moth, what'd you do to me? What type of difficulty, Professor? Well, we're not sure as we'd like. We're not sure as we'd like to be. But what I can tell you is that the environment has an adverse effect upon humans, inducing nausea at the very least. And at the worst? Fainting, migraines, possible nerve damage. Oh god. Gosh, that's that's serious. As I say, it's best to keep away. But let's not go into that now. Why are you keep calling me my dear? We've had a long day. For now, let's just say that we refer to the far end of the island as the danger zone. Danger zone! For good reason. ask you not to put yourself at risk by venturing beyond this mountain range here. He refuses... Oh, he refers to the, the map once more, drawing a line past the center and an X through the in section. There are wild, aggressive cats out there. I wouldn't want you getting too close to them. Unlike our lovely fellows closer to home. He's led me to a spot where a few cats are lounging about. What do you say we try our your catalog for a while? He stoops down and picks one of the animals. A disgruntled looking cat who was who was sleeping under the shade in a palm tree. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> cat. Hello. He's not happy at all. He's pissed off. The cat lets out a displeased mew doesn't struggle. His large body billowing with long orange fur just sort of hangs in the professor's arms in a lazy resignation. Would you like to have a go at scanning this delightful chat? I find the on switch somewhat timidly activated. The gadget immediately comes to artificial life, emitting a boop 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 sound with a red pulsing light. I select the app called CatScan. And it loads instantly. There's no delay on this thing. The professor holds the cat towards me with his arms outstretched. I'm sure he said the scanning chip is implanted in the back of the neck somewhere, but it's difficult to find one's neck amidst a thick cloud of fur. Cloud? Cloud? Cloud of fur. I blow to make it. No, I blow to make a party and press the catalog. Scan. It's a bit like scanning groceries in the supermarket where I used to work. That should do it. He plops the marmalade tom back into its shape. Sure enough, upon withdrawal, I find the cat has been successfully scanned. Meow. Fluffy, floofy butt is his name. I love it. Floofy butt. Floofy butt. Name. Fluffy butt. Gender. Male. Age. Ten years. Four months. Breed. Red tabby. Persian. Eye color. Red. Amazing. Clever, isn't it? A large part of your job here will be to tag and scan the cats, such as Mr. Fluffy butt here. But it looks like you've got no problems at all in that. Looks like you got no problems at all in that area. Excellent work, Wild. Well, I'm glad someone likes me. Thank you, sir. I can't wait to get started. Well, why don't you get a bit more practice with the catalog and scan the rest of them while we're here? These five spend a lot of time together. They all friends. They're like a little family. Aren't you? Oh, yes, you are. The professor seems to be a genuine cat lover like me. Uh... I think we're going to get on great. Okay, here it goes. No help this time. Professor steps back. First cat I approach is very friendly with beautiful calico markings. It comes towards me. Get ready, prank. Prank sounds. 
Meow. <laughs> Trixie. Trixie. Gender. Female. Three years, eight months. Calico American short hair. I color green. Next is an elegant, sleek, hairless cat sitting gracefully in the sun. She doesn't pay me much attention and allows me to scan her with minimal fuss. Ugh! Snooty booty! <laughs> Meow! Oh god, okay. Snooty booty! Gender, female. 11 years, 1 month. Breed, Sphinx. Eye color. The fourth cat I approach is noisy. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, meow. Nick Murphy. Male. Six years. Brown. Crossbreed. Green. And finally, the one I deliberately put off until last. He's been skulking around the edges of activity, on uh, eyeing me suspiciously, as though he could pounce at any moment. I laugh at myself, already projecting personalities onto these animals. He's got this one's. This one's. He's a little uh, sassy. Kibbles. Male, three years, white British long hair, three. All done. Hope you enjoyed meeting some locals. Professor lets out a little laugh. I have a feeling you'll get to know them quite well in time. That's probably enough for your first day, don't you think? It's quite a lot to take in. I'm suddenly exhausted and grateful to be heading back to camp. It's quite late by the time I've unpacked and settled myself, but I want to write my journal before I sleep. Before I sleep. Surprised how chilly it is. I pulled up my I pulled up my sleeping bag right to my chin, but I feel goose pimples blo bloom over my arms. Shivering, I rub them to warm myself. It makes me smile to think that this inherent reaction to the cold is what is. Yeah, what will be keeping my new feline friends warm tonight? Funny if they just all like get in the tent and like snuggle. My eyelids close, thinking of cats and the island and the professor. The world around me drifts away as I float dip into a dream. Ugh! No! Stop it! I'm not sure how long I've been asleep, but I awake with a violent jolt. It leaves me sitting bolt upright. It's too dark to see anything, but I hear a rustling, and then a strange electronic noise. The one that in my sleepy confusion, I can't place right away. Boop, 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 boop. The catalog. Acting on instinct, I uh, acting on instinct, I scramble to my feet and follow the noise out of the tent. I look around me, and my fears are confirmed when I catch the sight of a pulsing red light getting fainter in the direction of the forest. Snap into action, running as fast as I can. Barefoot, dressed in my pajamas, running at full speed in the forest in the dark of the night. I must be crazy. The, word, the words of the professor pauper are ringing in my ears. I need you to protect it above all else. 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 My legs are trembling beneath me. I stop feeling my heartbeat. Heavy throughout my body, I wheeze in and out, my breath boiling in front of me in white puffs. Oh, oh. I feel like this. Why? I shouldn't feel like this. Why am I so dizzy? I try to get my bearings and realize I blundered perilously close to the danger zone. I can just make out ships with large animals in front of me before my eyes close and I drop them. Is a calico cat I scanned yesterday is sitting in front of me and she drops a cat in the catalog at my feet. Oh, good kitty! I pass out. Oh. There's a mystery afoot! 
Oh man. Hello, can you hear me? Are you okay? What is it? Don't be ridiculous, Kibbles, it's a human. Oh yeah, yuck, I can smell it now. It smells like a human. Oh, do be quiet. Are they alive? Of course it's alive. It's breathing, you imbecile. Why isn't it moving? Would you come on and give them some space? Move back a bit. Yeah, stand back. Move out of my, move out of my way. Let me have a proper look, snooty booty. I begin to come to this sphinx cat standing over me as I open my eyes. We stare at each other for a moment, and I try to take in what's happening. Yeah, what's happening? Why can I hear the cat? Why are the cats talking? Is this one defective? Ugh, I feel sick. I'm gonna puke. The cats watch me intently. Going insane? Ugh, my head. What is it? what is it chattering about? They're scared and confused. Let me talk to them. Um, human? Are you alright? You I remember you took my catalog. Oh, but I gave it back to you. It's back in your pocket now. Try to reach my pocket and realize my hands are scratched to shreds. Ow, 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 ow! What's wrong with my hands? I try to stand. Ow, ow, my feet! What happened to me? Yeah, um, I guess that's from the all the climbing. I told you it wasn't ready for that. What's that? Ready for what? It's an anatom anatomical structure. It's animal uh, words. It's anatomical structure is far too delicate. I tried to slow it down. Yeah, Floof, you tried restraining a human who's that determined. It's like a Mar Mar Margie? That's how the anatomical structure didn't seem to delicate to me. Uh, I was like a what? De doing what? made your own way back to the beach. Okay. But that doesn't explain... I show my bleeding hands. Ah, you crawled... Kara. Kara? Who's Kara? That's not my name. It's a term of endearment. It's an Irish thing. It's inappropriate. Wait, I crawled? Sure did. Like a cat? Yep. All the way from the mountain. Like a bleeding mountain lion, impressive. But why? Because you got the sickness. Shh. Uh, maybe you should sit down, human. We need to have a talk. Possibly a long talk. Talk? Yes, that's right. Since when can cats talk? Oh, for goodness sake. Since the dawn of time, how else do you think we communicate? Uh, stop sp splitting whiskers, Major. You know full well that we that the human is saying. You know full well what the human is saying. I think the revolution here, revelation here, Kara, is that you can understand us. Yes, that too. Will someone please explain what the hell is going on? Well. We don't fully understand everything ourselves, at least not at the not all the details of how this works. I think being stood in a forest surrounded by a bunch of talking cats is about as much detail as anyone can want. I agree. And more to the point, we were rather hoping you would be able to help us. You are the scientist, after all. I'm just a fucking student, man. What we do know is that the clock has started ticking for you. What do you mean? Well, there's no easy way to say this, you car. I, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but... You'll be catified. Uh, I'll be what? Whether you help or not, you don't have a lot of time before... <clears throat> if 
if I may. It would seem, and we are basing this off experiences to date, that when a human manages to find themselves in what, what I believe you call the danger zone, they are vulnerable in ways that they perceived previously were not. That is to say, you're screwed. <laughs> you're not helping. Don't make me... <laughs> oh, mountain lion? There'll be no violence of any kind. Forgive me for not being... Forgive me for being a bit panicked here. The vulnerability to which Snooty Booty was referring is, simply put, if you are bitten or scratched by an elder cat within the danger zone, begin to process, you begin a process of change that ultimately will result in a full feline transition. Catified! So, basically you're telling me I'm a cat. Look down amongst the scratches on my right hand, two distinct puncture marks. The reality, the reality of the situation descends upon me like a cold mist. Basically. Yes. My head is spinning. This is too much for me to take in. This is my first fucking day here. Take a breath now. Or you're not looking so good. What? Have I started to change? I feel my I feel my head for ears. Everything seems to be normal. No. I just mean you're looking a bit shaky, understandably so. I take a few deep, steady breaths and calm myself. Enough to say. Um, okay. So... Why? How? What? Give me an idea. Or give me some data. Give me some data. What have you got so far? Look, we'll answer anything that we can. But the truth is, we have more questions than answers ourselves. So, you said you need me to help. What exactly would that entail? Well, finding our friends would be a start. The cats on this island are all going missing. We don't know what's happening to them. But the body count is rising, and we've hit a wall. A wall of ignorance, maybe. Really? How many times do I have to tell you? The Mueller's are to blame. The Mueller's? Now, fluffy butt. There's no need for name calling. Speaking of name calling, I'll remind you to call me Major. Yeah. Look, they can't help the way they are. It's lack of breeding, you know. Overbreeding, if you ask me. Again, Mueller's? They're the older cats, the island originals. They can't speak the way we can, hence the derogatory term. to blame exactly. Well, if I knew that, there'd be no need for this elaborate kidnapping. It's hardly proving to be a roaring success after all. Look, Kara, all we really know is that we are no longer safe on this island. The elders who live within the danger zone are hostile towards us. Not sure why. It's just always been that way. It's always just always been that way. Now, because cats are being taken, nowhere is, is safe either. You expect the occasional miss. We you expect the you ex the expect the occasional mishap. We live on an undomesticated world here, after all. But lately, cats have been disappearing almost every day. Even the last human we catified. Yeah, even the last human we catified went missing. I'm sorry. What? Let's not open old wounds, Kibbles. Yes, onwards and upwards. Well, first things first. This werecat thing. Catification. Transition. Whatever. How does it work? Time passes and you transform into a cat. Nah. Ugh. It's a gradual process. It's different for everyone, but you won't just turn overnight. The clock is ticking for 
worst side effect is a transition to be able to understand us. Well, some of us. Not the elders, obviously. No, not the, not the domestics either. Then you have the whole heightened senses thing. The increased agility, the crazy body hair stuff. Let's not worry the human with details just yet. I assume there's an antidote. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed in that assumption. Hang on, you said there was someone else you put through this transition. Well, let's hope you're a better bet than they were. Fortunately, they weren't able to discover an antidote or get our friends back. I know where their notes are, though. Okay. Really? Trade. Huh? You help us, and I'll give you progress reports. So what do you say, Kara? Will you help us? Help the kitties. I think I'll help the kitties. Not much of a choice, really, is it? Afraid not. Okay, fine. This is where I start. Is there anything you can tell me that will help track down your missing friends? Well, no one lives in the sense. Start with the Mueller's, and I'll eat it. I'll eat my hat if I, if it doesn't end up there too. Don't mind him. He's set in his ways. We have every reason to believe the abductors take place in your part of the island. Yes, it's nowhere near the danger zone. Well, that doesn't make much sense. But I suppose nothing does around this place. The catalog starts beeping. Oh, shit. Oh, my alarm. I have to get to work. You run along now. We don't want you rousing suspicions with your people. You can meet up with us later. I got friends. I'll make sure those reports are in your tent before this evening. Thanks, Kara. You're one in a million. Imagine the odds are far greater than that, given your new health status. Go! And thanks from all of us. Yay! I have just enough time to get myself tidied up for work. I'm about to peel off my filthy pajamas when I hear when I hear my catalog beeping. I have a message, but I can't tell who it's from. It's not from any of the contacts that Professor per Popper programmed into it. In fact, there's no contact information at all. That's just no number. Are you sure it is wise to trust everyone? Anyone? Uh -oh. What on earth does that mean? Who is this? There's a lot you don't know. Think carefully about who you can find. I think I'm gonna the messages are gone. My catalog has no record of them. My shit got hacked! I don't have any time to think about this right now. I need to get ready. As soon as I'm presentable, I head over to the lab. I'm 10 minutes late. It doesn't give a good impression on my first morning. Ah, oh, wow. Good to see you. I was beginning to worry. Did you oversleep on your first day? I'm terribly sorry, sir. I think I'm... I think you're traveling and all the excitement of yesterday. I take punctuality very seriously. I think that's across my fault. Not to worry, it's perfectly understandable. You'll find I'm quite relaxed about most things, as long as you get to work them. I don't much mind what hours you need. Thank you, sir. So, shall we get started? My goodness, what on earth happened to you? Looking at the scratches all over my hands. Oh, I fell and tried to save myself by grabbing a bush. I'm afraid I led you astray last night. Not everyone can take it. Not everyone can take a double ball. How's the head this morning? I decided it's easier to play along. A little bit fuzzy, but it won't affect my work, sir. Really ought and drink spirits on an empty stomach. We ought to get those hands sorted out, though. They look pretty nasty to me. 
She goes to the tall metal cabinet in the corner and takes out a bottle of some cotton wool and begins cleaning and tending to my tending to my hands while he talks. For today, I'd like you to help me with a few tasks around the lab. Uh, to get the hang of things. From uh, but from tomorrow, I'll let you make your own choices about how best to carve up your time. Of course, you are primarily here to carry out your job on my as my research assistant. However, try to make the most of your time on the island. Once your work is completed, we'll be saying goodbye. This really is a once in a lifetime opportunity, so don't waste it all in the lab. Yeah, it's once in a lifetime. You're gonna be a kitty cat before you fucking know it. Naturally, I need your help around here. I'd also like to get your hands dirty with some field work. Make sure you spend that time exploring the island. It's a beautiful place and there's a lot to see. Take the time you take the time to get to know the cats. I fully understand and their behavior is crucial. I fully words, well, I fully understand of their behavior is crucial to the to our research. That was kind of a weird sentence to read. There is plenty to see and do. However, you must be careful not to overwork. Take regular rest and relaxation. We don't want you to burn yourself out. Now do we? I'll try to get the balance right. That's the spirit. So there you are. He's done a first class job on my wounds. And there aren't bothering me nearly as much. I spent the rest of the day with the professor getting to know Finding out where everything is, and learning some of the basic duties I'll be performing routinely. By the end of the day, I'm exhausted. I make my way to my tent. Meow. I'm about to flop down on my bed when I see a package poking out from underneath it. It's the reports that Kibbles promised to deliver. To deliver. That's right. The previous person barely made a start on producing an antidote. I'm gutted and worried. What if I can't do any better? Will I just turn into a cat? I decided it's not an option and resolve to get going on my own research tomorrow. My instincts tell me that the cat will be the cats will be a good starting point. I have a feeling that they know a lot more than they are pretending to tell me. I need to gain their trust and see if they can't if I can't get them to open up a bit. I'm sure I'll make more progress if I focus on one at a time. I'm optimistic that one to one sharing will prove fruitful. It's a small it's a small glimmer of hope. Tonight, I'm not fit for anything. I can barely even write in my own journal before I fall asleep. First warning of waking up on the island. I'm so excited to discover what the day will bring. Should I jump straight into lab research, or maybe I should go to wise to start investigating a way to help the cats and find a cure to myself? I think. Perhaps a good starting point would be to get some other cats a little better on the one of basis. Yeah. What should I do today? Romance, research, or recon? 